Hey ladies. So my fault, I'm going to own it. Last week, Dr. Carmen and I were talking about why it's harder for older athletes to keep up with the younger athletes and some myths around aging. And I totally forgot to hit the record button. So we're doing it again. Right. Um, it was really an interesting topic. And I, we had um, a few ladies on there and they had some really great questions and I'm really sad that they didn't, you guys don't get to hear their questions. But we're gonna just try to cover it all via this, this time. Um, so let's jump in and talk about why it's harder for us older athletes to keep up with the younger athletes. <laughs> Sure. So when we are comparing, right, um, or trying to um, uh, look at different levels, right, um, as far as ages, we always want to make sure that we're kind of comparing apples to apples, right, instead of apples to oranges. Mm -hmm. When we start comparing the apples to oranges, we're not on the same trajectory, right? If you will, right? So we think about... Um, female athletes in their 20s versus female athletes in their 40s and 50s, um, there are some changes that occur um, in our body. And there are a lot of things that we, our body's very resilient, right? Um, that we can maintain. Um, as far as aging athletes go, um, we see women and men who are marathon runners, triathletes, right? Bodybuilders, weightlifters, in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. So it's not like all of a sudden we hit 40 or 45 or 50 even, and all of a sudden our body's just like, nope, I can't do it anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> um, that's just not true. Um, what we see in the literature is that um, a lot of the things that we think that are associated with aging um, is actually associated with inactivity, right? not actually associated with aging um a lot of things like weakness memory you know balance changes aches and pains i have to tell you one of my biggest pet peeves is when people go to the doctor and they're like oh you know they have some complaint of some symptom and the doctor just says oh you're just getting older that pisses me off man <laughs> That is my biggest pet peeve because they are continuing that myth that our body breaks down. It just quits at a certain age. And that is so not true. Um, so hopefully we can kind of address some of that. But um, even chronic illnesses, um, that doesn't just automatically occur. There's no like ticker in the background that's like, oh, you've hit 40. Guess what? You've increased, yeah, your risk for all these things, or now you're going to have some chronic, yeah, illness, or you're not going to be able to make the gains that you did before. Um, so when we're comparing, what's the difference, right? Um, we do know that there are some changes that occur in our body um, well, as we age, right? Um, but those changes are things that we can kind of account for. Okay. So um, we do know that as we age, we do have a little bit, just a one to two percent change in our BMR, our basal metabolic rate. Okay. Well, I want to clarify with people that's every eight to 10 years. You're not losing one percent every year. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so that does occur, right? Um, we see that in the literature and also um, our VO2, our volume of oxygen capacity changes when we get older. Um, the amount that it changes is directly related to our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so those are the two main factors that change um, with anybody as we age. Um, some, it changes a lot more than others, depending on our lifestyle. Um, but those are what kind of, um, I don't want to say slow things down, but change our capacity um, for exercise, for aerobic activity, um, to maintain those gains mm -hmm. right, within our workouts. Yeah. And I, because and I want to like tell my athletes from like this perspective, like I am a life coach. And so I know how important mindset is. And I also know that our brain, whenever we create a belief, 
our brain then goes and spends the time, the time looking for evidence to validate that belief. So when we have this belief system that um, as a society, collectively, we have decided this truth that aging, as we age, we gain weight, we lose muscle, we lose our athletic ability, we can't keep up, we have aches and pains, we get gray hair, we get wrinkles. All these things are part of just aging and we have no control over them. When we believe that, we're gonna create evidence to validate that and we're gonna look for evidence to validate that. So we're gonna look at our 40 year old friend who by the way, doesn't eat really healthy and doesn't exercise and be like, see, she's 40, she's overweight, she's got aches and pains, having to dye my hair. Like your belief is causing a cognitive bias that you only see that. And really like that's the whole point of like Carmen and I talking about this is I really want to start dismantling that belief with science to show you the number of the calendar years you live does not dictate you getting gray hair, gaining weight. Yes, <laughs> that's absolutely true. So um, what we see is that um, as we do age, right? Um, sorry, I had a point, I completely lost it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> as, we, as we age, so those changes, right, that occur, um, usually people say, oh, you know, when they hit a certain age or that they hit that belief system of, oh gosh, okay, now I'm 40, this is midlife, right? Things are changing, my body's not cooperating with me anymore. Um, what's actually, uh, what we're seeing is that when we're in our 20s and 30s, um, our body is much more forgiving, right? Um, it's much more forgiving to the abuse that we usually put through our bodies, whether that means um, more, I mean, like poor diets, right? Um, more uh, warrior weekends, more um, unhealthy decisions, right? Or like poor lifestyle choices is what we would you know, um, put that under, even how we cope with our stress, right? Our thoughts and our belief systems, um, our body is, and our brain is much more forgiving in our twenties yeah, and thirties. And so as we do age, um, it would be very helpful or behoove us uh, to be more cognizant, right? Of um, what our lifestyle actually looks like and what, you know, and how it's contributing to our health. So even though that one to two percent of change in that BMR, um, by having regular aerobic activity um, or working out on a regular basis, can actually increase uh, that the, what they call the exercise capacity, right? Um, which can override that BMR, uh, fifteen to twenty-five percent. So it increases your BMR by fifteen to twenty-five percent. Well, technically, it increases your um, exercise capacity. Uh, which can, it's not the same thing as your BMR, but it balances out that change in BMR. So it negates the loss, the one to 2% that you lose every eight to 10 years by crossfitting or exercising, you're negating that loss. Exactly, exactly, by maintaining that aerobic activity. Yeah, that exercise, your workouts yeah, on a regular basis, right? Um, so what we also see um, as we change um, in our physiology, as we get older in our 40s and usually between 40 and 50, um, we start to get into that perimenopause, right, stage. So our hormones are changing. Now, there's a couple of different things. When I say hormones, it's not just our estrogen and our progesterone and our testosterone, but also our cortisol that's produced by our adrenals, um, as well as our thyroid can also be affected. Right. So it's kind of this culmination and we just put it underneath this umbrella term of hormones um, are changing. And so our body's trying to respond to that a little bit differently. Right. So we may notice our body composition changing. Right. So what I mean by that is you may not notice weight changes on the scale, um, but you may notice where it feels like, oh, I've got a little bit more abdominal um fat, right? Or maybe my muscles are not quite as lean or as toned as they were five, 10 years ago, 
right? Yeah. So our body makes or our body changes that because we're kind of in a different season in our life. Um, but we can counteract that <laughs> by manipulating um, how we eat, what we're eating and addressing that oxidative stress that's directly lowering that VO2 max as we age. Does that Your make sense? max just doesn't like automatically lower because you're getting older. What I understand is it decreases because of oxidation in the body from stress and toxins. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oxidation of years. It's not, I'm 38, 39. It's I've overloaded my system or not overloaded. I have put toxins and stress in my system and it keeps accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. And that's creating the oxidative stress which lowers my VO2, my VO2. Yes, yeah. So our VO2 is the oxygen, it's the volume of oxygen capacity, right? That can bind to our um, red blood cells. So we know that as we exercise and work out that increases our circulation, right? It increases our circulation, um, that will increase the oxygen availability to our muscles, to our organs, um, to all of our body systems. But if that oxygen binding capacity has decreased, then by default, it's going to be lower amounts of yeah, oxygen um, that's even circulating throughout your body, mm -hmm. right? And so um, as a result of that, that's that oxidative stress and that inflammation. Yeah. Um, and you're exactly right. We call that a bioaccumulation over time. Um, and those toxins may be things um, in our water, right? In the air, in our food, like... To be honest, we're bombarded by toxins on a regular basis in this, um, uh, I don't know, modern world. It's time in our society, yeah. Yeah, you it, it, you can't really get away with uh, away from it these days. So, um, but we can reverse that, right? Because our body's very resilient. So I tell folks, if you think of um, those toxins, exposures, that oxidative stress as a... a um, a bioaccumulation over time, um, if you begin to reduce the current exposure and address that bioaccumulation, um, because our body is so resilient, there's no reason why we wouldn't be able to, you know, get back to um, a regenerative, um, healthier state as if we were, you know, 10 or 20 years younger. Love it. Yes. So um, the other big thing, so when we're talking about the hormones and we're talking about the VO2 max, um, one thing that's common is stress in that hormone cortisol. And so we do see, um, I mean, it just kind of comes with age, I think. As we get older, we have more responsibilities in life. Um, we've got families and jobs and careers, you know, and um, things that kind of pull us in what may feel like 50 different directions, right? Um, how we manage those stressors um, is really important because that can directly uh, increase our oxidative stress, uh, which in turn will lower that VO2. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think that it's really important to be able to um, enjoy <laughs> your workouts, right? So as you're working out, um, what we often see that is the most helpful in um, uh, women in their 40s or 50s to maintain that muscle and to decrease that the body composition changes that occur uh, when we feel like there's a little bit more fat um, being stored is to increase that resistance training. Yeah, what are we doing CrossFit? Yeah, that's what you guys are. <laughs> heavy stuff and run or bike or row and lift some heavy stuff. That's what you guys are used to, which is perfect. Um, what I'm going to also recommend is what we see is um, if you're doing that weight training, uh, at, do it at 100%, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're CrossFit. It's like 110 it has to be that 110%. has to be that controlled, right, very... Um, uh, aware and focused um, uh, positioning, because um, that is what's going to help to maintain that muscle tone and that muscle strength. Right? Yeah. Um, so if folks are not doing it as <laughs> um, focused and controlled. We've got to we got to make sure, yeah, um, that you're 
uh, performing your workouts in that manner um, to increase those muscle gains and to maintain, because that's what we're trying to maintain that muscle tone and then um, of course increase as well. Now, we don't want to maintain, we want gains. We will always want gains, yeah. So this is <laughs> important. Are. <laughs> in manipulating our diet just a little bit can really help with um, those gains as we get older, right? Um, so we've talked about, um, la maybe it was last week, yeah, we talked about leucine, which is an amino acid. Um, I didn't clarify the difference between leucine and isoleucine, okay? Because they are different. They're both amino acids and they're within the same a family, but one has an isomer group attached to it. Okay, so leucine um, is helpful uh, adding into our like in it'll be in the branch chain amino acids right as a pre workout because that helps to modulate the differences uh, with our what seems um, uh, more elevated progesterone, which we usually get sort of in the perimenopause, menopause state. Um, as our estrogen decreases, our progesterone um, will look uh, elevated. And when our progesterone is a little bit more elevated, um, it's a little bit harder for our muscles to um, uh, st strengthen, right? Yeah, or it's a really good book called Roar by um, Dr. Sims. I can't remember her name, but she talks about higher, project, what progesterone does is it decreases our ability to synthesize protein, protein. And we need to be able to synthesize protein to build muscle. And so that progesterone is kind of working against us a little bit in terms of synthesizing protein. Yes, yeah. So we can offset that by manipulating uh, what we eat when we eat it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I wanted to bring that up um, because that's the way that we can work towards those gains. Um, another is an, a, another is an, another amino acid. <laughs> it's called arginine. Um, so arginine is an amino acid that's a precursor to um, nitric oxide. If you guys have heard of nitric oxide, if you're familiar with that <laughs> um, in the athletic uh, world, it's very big because it can do a lot of things for our blood vessels, right? Um, a lot of folks, yeah, it helps to dilate our blood vessels, but it can also decrease that oxidative stress. So it can increase that VO2, right? Um, so by making sure that we've got plenty of arginine um, on hand can be very helpful. Um, and uh, to, de to decrease that oxidative stress, which in turn will increase that VO too, right? All right, um, let's see. Silica, we talked about silica? Yes, so um, we talked about, when we think about aging, right? A, little a lot of people worry about um, our uh, skin, skin our wrinkles. <laughs> why we all take, uh, what is it? can see the container that it's in. Collagen? Collagen. Collagen, yeah. And collagen's gotten really big on the market in the last few years because of that. Um, but we also, as we age, we always so worry about our joints, right? We also worry about knees and hips and shoulders and yeah, elbows. Um, and so that collagen is also necessary for our joint health as well as our hair, skin, and nails. <laughs> Um, so collagen is a great uh, thing to add into our daily routine. You know, oftentimes you can find collagen in collagen powders or um, protein powders. It'll be like added in or collagen creamers I see these days. Um, and that's a great way to go. Um, I'm going to push it a little bit further and have you consider adding silica. It's actually a mineral um, that promotes the body's production of collagen. Okay. So it's just a different route to get that collagen in. So we can get collagen in, yeah, like even bone broths. I usually um, tell people consider adding bone broths um, into their weekly meal, meal planning, uh, as well as that collagen powder. But we wanna stimulate the body's ability to produce that, especially if people are starting to get aches and pains in their joints and they're starting to see changes or they've had injuries um, in, the, in joints. Uh, silica is a great thing to start to um, add in. Um, you can either do that individually or sometimes as a multi-mineral supplement. Um, it's usually really beneficial for people because our body doesn't need, um, our, our body is a whole person, right? And so 
Um, oftentimes by individualizing one vitamin or one mineral can help, but it doesn't always give us the whole picture, right? And so that's why I would prefer people look for a supplement that's a multi-mineral and has all the essential minerals that we need with silica in it. Right. Um, I will put this in the, uh, on YouTube. I will put the links. Can you have, do you have recommendations for certain ones? Uh, yes, I do. And yeah. I'll just put the links to those ones in the description in this video. Okay. Yeah, then it'll be easier accessible for folks. Yep, perfect. Um, yes, so those are the things where I'd start. Um, I know that we also talked about magnesium. Magnesium is another mineral. Um, the estimated statistics are that 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium. And that's a huge yeah. um, <laughs> number of people. And usually the, the reason why um, is because our body uses magnesium in over 300 biochemical reactions. So it's on a daily basis, our body's using magnesium. And usually we don't have a lot of stores um, because of our current conventional farming practices. Um, and so that's why sometimes it's helpful to supplement the magnesium um, as well um, to a good... Uh, um, nutrient dense diet um, so that we can get in a little bit more magnesium and magnesium manifests usually in symptoms like um, constipation, uh, poor sleep or restless sleep, um, anxiety, right? Um, depression even. Um, if people have high blood pressure or diabetes, uh, that can all be results of, uh, a component of that can be a result of a low magnesium. Um, so sometimes that's something that's very helpful um, for everybody, but especially even those um, as we're aging, if we experience a lot of um, muscle cramps, right? Or spasms, um, magnesium can be very helpful. And usually that's your body telling you, hey, something's out of balance. You need to build up those stores. And so that's where um, adding a little supplementation can be really beneficial. When we did recorded this or when we taped this the first time, she had a very specific question about magnesium. Like, I guess there's different types. Yes, there are different types. So magnesium is magnesium. It's just that they um, bind it to different types of molecules okay and they do that because they're trying to target specific areas okay. so um the most common magnesiums that you'll find are things like magnesium oxide um and that has a tendency if you do higher doses will call ca cause uh loose stools or diarrhea okay. um magnesium citrate is usually one that you can find in conventional pharmacies and they use that for constipation Right. So I tell folks, um, you want a combination of magnesium. You don't want 100 percent magnesium oxide or magnesium citrate um, because it's really hard to absorb those forms of magnesium. And so you're getting it more for the bowel and the uh, bowel regularity than you are for like, yeah, um, muscle health or for um, uh, um, mood. Right. Um, or even for sleep. So the ones that you would prefer would be a magnesium malate. Um, and these are probably are not going to be in the cheapest supplements. The cheapest supplements of magnesium is where you're going to find the oxide and the citrate. Um, but magnesium malate is kind of the middle of the road. Um, magnesium uh, glycinate, G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-E. Magnesium glycinate um, has an affinity for the mind. So that one's really beneficial for sleep, for relaxation. Um, the malate has an affinity for the muscles. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a magnesium three innate um, that can be really beneficial. So I tell folks, look for a magnesium um, that has at least one of those three, the glycinate, the three innate, or the malate. Okay, because then you know it's a combination. Um, you may be able to find a chelated magnesium. That's also easier for our body to absorb, right? Because um, the trick with minerals are is that minerals are elemental, right? Um, so they can be a little bit harder to absorb. Um, so we either want minerals that are attached to something that's easy to absorb um, biochemically, or we want minerals that come from a plant source, a plant-based source because that means the plant has taken the minerals from the ground, has absorbed it and used it within the chlorophyll. And so it's already um, more bioavailable. Um, so that's, yeah, keep that in mind when you're looking for a multi-mineral supplement. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 
Um, let's see, I wanted to bring those things up. Also, um, we talked about this a little bit last week, but when we're trying to manipulate um, our diet a little bit to make sure that we're, you have the best opportunity to make those gains, um, increase that muscle and that exercise or aerobic capacity, um, doing that branch chain amino acids that leucine included, uh, aiming for nine grams pre-workout, right? And then aiming for um, your protein post-workout, right? Your complete proteins. Now we did talk about whey, whey proteins last time. Okay, so um, uh, I am a little bit picky about whey. <laughs> so I want you to find a good whey protein. You want a whey isolate protein. Okay, um, because it usually has a, lot, a, a, a little bit less inflammatory things in it, right? Um, not everybody uh, tolerates whey protein well, um, but whey protein has the highest amount in complete proteins. And so that's why I usually yeah, have people consider the whey protein. Um, there are a lot of plant-based proteins that I love, uh, but usually they're missing um, some some amino acids in there. Um, you can also do like a paleo protein that's made from organic beef. Um, that will also be a complete protein as well. Yeah. Um, I do, I meant to double check this, but you'll have to double check and see. Sometimes hemp protein will also advertise as a complete protein. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the taste of hemp protein, <laughs> but um, you, when you look at the label, you'll see the um, grams of each amino acid will be different. They may not be as high as uh, the grams of, of amino acids in a whey or a paleo protein. I gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So like, for example, if you're doing a soy protein, you're going to have to do twice as much soy protein. So, you know, um, the two scoops versus one scoop to get the same grams of the amino acids. Okay. So you got to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. yeah so that's what I've just done because I have a lot of plant-based proteins. Yes. Like I'll do those in the morning with my smoothie and then post-workout I'll switch to my white isolate. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Because your body needs those ingredients when it's in that repairing, right? Regenerative state uh, post-workout. Okay, excellent. Um, the other thing is, what else did I wanna mention? Oh, okay. So <laughs> when we're, again, we're manipulating our diet, right? And we're manipulating our lifestyle. So we have to address, we always have to address the stress. <laughs> um in whatever form or fashion that is but we have to address that stress but as far as um the uh, our diet goes to also address the cortisol production and uh, metabolism or the breakdown of cortisol uh, which directly affects how our body stores fat um we can also manipulate our protein and our carbs as well right um so making sure that we are First meal a day is very high in soluble fiber and high in um, or higher in proteins than in carbs. Okay, okay. Um, because that higher amounts of proteins will help to support the production, the natural production of cortisol, kind of our baseline. Okay. Our body naturally secretes cortisol in the morning to kind of get us up, get us going, get us motivated. And then it kind of drops off throughout the day. Um, and then it should be its lowest at bedtime to help us sleep. Right. So in order to um, help us to decrease that cortisol, um, our afternoon snacks or meals, that's where we want to concentrate the, um, the most amount of carbs, right? So whatever um, protein to carb ratio that you're currently adhering to, you want to manipulate the timing during the day. So you want to do your higher carb um, in the afternoon, evening-ish, yeah, um, to reduce that cortisol to help with sleep. Okay. Right. We know that we need proper sleep so that our muscles can be in that regenerative state. <laughs> if we're not sleeping well, if we're, we have a restless sleep, um, then we're not going to be able to make those gains as well. Okay. Cool. All right. Any other questions? So I want to like just because I I think. I've coached enough people and I've talked to enough people about this that like our brains get so locked in on this belief that 
the number on the on the number of years that we've lived is indicative to us feeling that or whatever getting gray hair so i just really always have to hammer this point home so when I, we have a podcast episode way back about aging the myth around aging and like this was one of the eye-opening things is when dr carmen was like gray hair is not related to aging Gray yeah. hair is related to stress and the higher stress the more stress you have the more the body robs itself of vitamins and minerals and because of constant stress your body has robbed your i don't know i guess my mechanism to make my hair color <laughs> of the b vitamins and the lack of b vitamins then creates gray hair correct right. yes yep that increase stressors and sometimes it can be an acute stressor right um sometimes it doesn't uh but it can also be that chronic stress that builds up over time um we deplete our stores of those b vitamins those minerals like magnesium um and that manifests physically right so our we'll have those hair changes we'll get that gray hair um we may have even decreased collagen production and more wrinkles as we age it's often caused by stress yeah i love you always use the same example so i'll let you use it I tell folks, I was like, think of um, our presidents, right? You see their picture when they first get elected, and then you see their picture four years, eight years later, and they look like completely different people, right? That's stress, right? Yeah, that is stress and how the stress can actually change our physical body um, because we're not, because usually in those situations, um, we're not maintaining those stores of those minerals and those nutrients we need um, to be able to keep up with that demand of stress. So it happens to us too, just sometimes it's not as visible within um, those periods of times like it is in our with, with our presidents and we're not as public as they are, but um, the same mechanism is happening for folks. And we think of that as aging, right? We do know um, studies and studies have been done on the higher amounts of cortisol in our body, that stress response hormone over time um, directly affects our, our aging, right? So if people feel like, oh gosh, you know, I've aged in the last two years or I feel older than my actual calendar age is, you gotta check in and see where you are with handling stress, yeah. And we don't really want to hear that. Like when I first met Carmen, I owned a CrossFit gym just out of a divorce. Like I was suffering from PTSD and she's like, you don't feel good. You don't have energy. You don't sleep well. You don't feel good because you're stressed. And I'm like, nope, not stress. Give me a supplement to feel better. Tell me what mineral I'm missing so I can feel better. She's like, it's stress. And then I started and kind of, I got my life coach and I was like, oh, it was stress. It was stress the whole time. It was stress. Um, and chronic and long-term stress had eventually got all my chemicals off, right? Like I, I brought myself into adrenal fatigue, right? And um, so I just want to push that to you guys. Like we want to have as much as healthy as us CrossFitters are we still have a mentality where we want you to tell me, go take whey isolate, go take arginine and you will get your gains and that will be it. I don't have to deal with the stress because I feel like I'm fine. I'm managing stress fine. And like the lady that was with um, last week when we, I didn't record this, she was talking about like, I just feel like my VO2 max has decreased. My cardio endurance has decreased, right? I can't do as many burpees in the amount of time. And as we're talking, she's like, you know, I'm 45 now. I feel like the last year it's really dropped off. And her brain is gaining evidence to show her that it's because of age. And when we start talking, it was like, she has a five-year-old and she lost her house in a tragic event in like this year. Like yeah. these are the things that have decreased your VO2, not because you celebrated a birthday, another trip around the sun, and it was 45. Right. I really want to encourage you guys, like stress is impacting your aging, your hair color. It's impacting your performance. 
If you want to lift heavier, run faster and keep up with 20 hours, you're going to have to deal with your stress. I get it. I'm 40. I have a mortgage, right? I have responsibilities, but I also know like stress is going to be the biggest hurdle that you're going to have to overcome if you want the six pack, if you want to keep up with the 20 year olds, if you want to age well in the way you want to age. Right. My soapbox. <sighs> I think it's such an important message for women though. Yeah, it's such an important message because um, often women uh, end up being uh, caretakers, right? We are usually caretakers for our family, right? We're juggling a lot of different things. You're juggling family, you're juggling kids, you're juggling parents' health, you're juggling, you know, um, mortgages, your jobs, careers, businesses even. And so we've got a lot of things in play um, and yeah, if, I mean, if you're, you're getting by on a regular basis, you know, and you're rocking along thinking you're doing well, but you're not quite digging in a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, and so all that stress is, it builds up and directly, yeah, um, affects our physiology and our health. And I know a lot of us, like when I'm on my soapbox, people are like, well, I don't know what to do. Like, yeah, you know, I'm going to the CrossFit gym. I'm doing self care, right? Like I exercise I make the time to exercise. Right. And it's like, yes, that's good. And yes, you're eating healthy and yes, you're drinking water and yes, you're trying to minimize your stress, but you're still feeling stressed. And then the other component that we're missing is like, you've got to do for me, I was doing all of it, but I wasn't managing my mind. I didn't know how, right. I didn't know that my thoughts created my emotions and my emotions drove my actions. And from my actions, I was creating the results in my life. And I didn't know, right? Like all these things. And so that's why I think it's so valuable, like to be an optimal athlete. Like you look at LeBron James, right? He has a life coach. Yeah. Right. They get it. It's a holistic approach. If I want to be at the top of my game, I've got to deal with the food, the health, the recovery, and the mind because you cannot separate us as a human being, right? You can't take my mind and my emotions out of my body and expect to have like optimal performance. They go together. Right. And I'm not yeah. like on the soapbox that I'm like, want you to be like, yeah, I want to hire you as a coach him. I want you to go get the mental health you need to opt. That's why you're here watching this is you want to be a better athlete. You want to be a better athlete. You got to invest in your brain. Right. Exactly. I think that's what, you know, um, I think it, uh, it works better for folks to take that holistic approach, right? I tell folks all the time, we are not the sum of our parts, right? And sometimes that's what we get used to because in conventional medicine, it's like, oh, you're sent to specialist, to specialist, to specialist. It's like, well, that specialist only looks within their scope. And so it makes you feel like, oh, well, if my kidneys are fine, then everything else should be okay, right? Or but it's all connected. We're one human being. You can't take and remove one part without affecting other parts. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just want to mention to you guys, like, cause we talked with some of our participants last time she was talking about like doing a hormone panel and I recommended like Dr. Carmen and I, in our practice, when we get new clients that are really wanting to optimize their health. They're wanting to feel better right? Like start achieving big goals and really like optimize their health and their life. We start them out with a neurotransmitter hormone panel, mm -hmm. right? That we see, where are your hormones? Where are your neurotransmitters? Like your serotonin, and your dopamine, where's your cortisol? So then Dr. Carmen can help you start tackling that to get it balanced. Meanwhile, me and you work together an hour a week to start deconstructing these neurological pathways, these belief systems that are creating less than optimal results in your life and building new belief systems to get these results. And so this is a very unique program. We're different from anybody I've ever met that we do that. I tell you that, like go to your physician or find a natural path or reach out to Dr. Carmen or me like to start gathering, like getting these panels to out where you're at finding a coach whether it be me or someone else to start working on your ability to manage your stress in your life that's where you're going to get the results you want in your life is when you start doing it that holistically exactly and my soapbox <laughs> <laughs> anything else dr harman um i i think that covers it 
Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the only difference is really our hormones and our oxidative stress. And that's just from, and both things can really be addressed and managed. So you can, you can perform and hang with those 20 year olds. Yeah. It's gotta be more intentional. The older we get, the more intentional we gotta be about it. Exactly. Cool. All right. Thank you, girl. Thank you. See you guys next week, next Thursday, same time, six o'clock central. Bye. Bye.